Hi, thanks for tuning in to John's IT Vlog. I'm just uh, doing this introduction here for my backyard. Uh, and I wanted to share with you basically an addition that I uh, made to my studies for the SYL 501 Security Plus exam uh, from Comtia. I'm currently studying for the Security Plus exam. And I, I came up with a study plan, and you can see that uh, in the link above and but I recently discovered that I needed to study something else in addition to the system that I had on and that is actually it's kind of obvious but I, I, I didn't pay that much attention before um, that is actually pay pay a little more attention to the acronym list in the that is listed in the objectives and so um, this is why I wasn't paying attention before and this is why I'm paying attention now so I this year I completed my A plus exam uh, test and certification and I was certified A plus and when I was studying as I was studying for the A plus I paid a lot of attention to the different domains and objectives of the A plus but did not pay that much attention to the acronyms now when I say attention I mean close attention like see each one of the acronyms and what they mean and everything else what I did was I browsed through them and realized that most of the acronyms were already listed on the objectives and so when I realized that for the A plus I basically just you know browsed through them and and uh, and saw that a lot of them were already in the objective so I didn't pay that much attention now why am I paying attention, uh, closer attention to the acronyms for the Security Plus exam? Well, as I was studying through some pra practice exams and some uh, kind of like practice uh, performance-based questions, one of the questions that I um, uh, uh, saw, the one of the questions that I was uh, studying for, asked me to do a uh, kind of like a pairing matching type of. Uh, um, question that would match up attacks with a description for the attack uh, for the attack and so it would say something like scams or whaling or farming or one of those and you would have to match it up with a description now in one of the um, matching questions they had the word spam right which is basically spamming from uh, instant messaging now I kind of went hmm um, I'm vaguely familiar with that and so let me go ahead and go to the objectives and so when I went to the objectives to the to the listing uh, uh, section of, of all the attacks I realized that uh, it wasn't there so I said hmm it's not there but then I did did a kind of like a, a find inside of the objectives and I realized that it was not on the objectives but it was in the acronym list so then I realized, okay, the exam then might have a lot of stuff that is only in the acronym list and not necessarily in the objectives. And so I should pay closer attention then to a lot of the acronyms that are on the um, Security Plus uh, or, or on the acronyms that are on the Security Plus objectives. And so I did. And so what I did was I went ahead and I went through every single acronym and see which ones are not explicitly mentioned already on the objectives. And so the way I did it was simple. I was just did a search. I did a search for each acronym and I saw whether they were already mentioned or not on the objectives. And so for example, just to give you an example, uh, an, acronym, an acronym that was already on the, on the security exam, uh, <laughs> nothing is coming out but you know what I mean right the uh, uh, I searched for the acronym and if it was listed on the objectives and on the acronyms then I would just kind of leave it alone but if there was an acronym that was not listed anywhere else in the objectives then I would pay close attention to that one and so what I did was I highlighted each one of those um, acronyms that were not anywhere else listed on the exam I went ahead and actually kind of like googled a simple one sentence or two sentence definition of it and I attached it to the notes of the acronym and so I'm going to share that with you guys so uh, in this video I'm going to be sharing every single acronym 
that is not listed anywhere else on the objectives of the exam and I am going to also give you a one sentence, two sentence uh, description of that acronym and that's just for better study and again just because I saw an example of a performance based question test, practice test that showed me that there could be material that is not necessarily on the objectives themselves uh, but that are kind of hinted or mentioned through the acronyms and so that's just a better tool to help you and to help me also for the uh, security exam so uh, let's go ahead and go through each one of those all right guys so here we are uh, again with the uh, CompTIA security acronyms uh, here and again this is I uh, realize that there is value in studying the acronyms for the security plus a little bit closer than I thought I should and so I'm going to be sharing with you again what are all the uh, acronyms that were not explicitly mentioned in the objectives above but that were either implicitly mentioned as you were studying them or simply not there and so um, this would add more value to your knowledge to your um, maybe it would maybe even put some pieces together as far as uh, things that we could be missing uh, when it comes to studying for all these topics and so it'll be uh, it'll be quite a few of them it would be random because these are by alphabetical order they're not by topic order they're not topical in order so you know, we will be jumping back and forth from topic to, to topic so but i hope that at least uh this this uh list here would help um, us to uh, understand a little bit better some of these concepts and maybe even you know we won't be um be surprised or caught in surprised uh during the exam with some of these as uh the example that i gave you earlier so um, as we read in the, in the CompTIA security acronyms uh, header, it says the following is a list of acronyms that appear on the CompTIA Security Plus exam. Candidates are encouraged to review the complete list, the complete list, and attain a working knowledge of all listed acronyms as a part of a com comprehensive exam preparation program. So they are saying it themselves that it is it is a, a an important part a part that person I didn't pay attention to because I thought that most if not all of them were already mentioned in the objectives but as you uh, as we saw earlier there are some that um, may have not been there explicitly now again some of these even the ones that I will mention might be already implicitly uh, you might have studied them when you actually came across a certain topic and then once you study that more in more detail you might have seen that term but again if not then um, I'll, we can see them through the acronyms list and so here we go we're gonna go through each one of them in alphabetical order here and so i'm going to be uh, zooming here let's see and go one by one so again um I'll, you know you can skip forward or anything if you already know these and so starting with the first one is aslr which is address space layout randomization and that definition is a computer security technique involved in preventing exploitation of memory corruption vulnerabilities and so a technique that is used basically to uh, prevent any buffer overflow attacks now the set the the other one here that i want to show is av for asset value now av where a lot of us are um, already used to the term for antivirus but we um, just have in mind that it, it could be used also as asset value uh, the next one down uh, would be CAN, which is controller area network. And the definition is the CAN bus is primarily used in embedded systems. And we saw that in one of the domains above. It's a network technology that provides fast communication above micro, uh, among microcontrollers for up real-time requirements. The net, um, then as we go forward here, just let me zoom on this one. The next one that I saw was CFB, which is Cypher Feedback. And Cypher Feedback mode is very similar to CBC. And the primary difference is that is that FB, F, CFB is a stream mode and it uses feedback to destroy patterns. So it has to do with ciphering. Now, CIO is a chief information officer, and so it is an executive that oversees the information technology, uh, um, the IT needs of a company. So that is the CIO. Then we see CRC, which is a cyclical redundancy check. 
Um, and I didn't put a definition on that. Sorry about that. You can Google that one. Then we have a CSO. And that one is basically the highest level executive directly responsible for an organization's entire security function. So there it is right there. So that is the CSO. Now we have a CSP, which is a cloud service provider, which is a third party company offering cloud based uh, platform infrastructure application or storage services. So in case you see CSP, then we also have a CSU, which is a channel service unit. A channel service unit is a digital communication service that is used to connect a digital line to a digital service. So channel service units can be used to link local area networks to a wide area network using telecommunication carrier services. And so this is CSU. CTM is the counter mode or, or CTR as well, is a simple counter based block cipher implementation in cryptography. Then we have CTO, it's another of those positions or officer positions. It's an executive level position in a company or other entity whose occupation is focused on the scientific and technological issues of an organization. So going down then moving to letter D, another one that I noticed uh, to pay attention to would be DFIR, which is the Digital Forensics and Investigation Response. And so it's kind of implicit, the uh, self-explanatory, the recovery and investigation of material found in digital devices, often in relation to computer crime. Then we have DHE, Data Handling Electronics, which is, uh, it ensures that data is properly secured and it's an asymmetric algorithm. Um, then we have, well, I'm sorry, actually what I wanted to explain here is that we have two of the same acronyms. And so the first one, the Data Handling Electronics is to ensure that data is properly secured. And the second one is an isometric uh, uh, algorithm that we already studied for the Divi Hellman ephemeral. Um, and so those are, this is one of the algorithm and the other one stands for the, just the ensuring of data handling electronics when it comes to properly storing them and handling them. Uh, moving on to the next letters, uh, the ones that you notice here still on the, uh, the letter D where, uh, DNAT, Destination Network Address Translation, which is a technique for transparently changing uh, the destination IP address of an end route packet in performing the inverse functions for any repl re replies. So it has to do with networking, with NATs. Uh, then also we have the, um, DRP, which is a disaster recovery plan, um, self-explanatory. When it comes to disaster, uh, disaster recovery, they, they could refer it uh, to it as DRP. Then we have DSU, which is data service unit. So it's a piece of telecommunication circuit terminating uh, equipment that allows digital data between telephony companies, lines, and local equipment. Now moving on to letter E, we have ESN, electronic serial number. And that is basically an is a unique identification number embedded by manufacturers of microchip microchip in wireless phones ESN. Then we have here EF, which is exposure factor. It is the subjective potential percentage of loss to a specific acid, uh, uh, and it's to specific acid if a specified threat is realized. And so. Uh, it has to do with just numbers and, and percentages as far as assets and loss of assets, etc. Uh, then we have FACL, which is a, syst a file system access control list and is a data structure, usually a table containing entries that specify individual or user group rights to specific objects such as programs, processors, or files. So it's a system file based access control list as we see, I guess, NTFS for Windows, for example. Um, going down to the letter G, I noticed that GRE1 wasn't mentioned and that is generic routing encapsulation, which is a tunneling protocol uh, developed by Cisco Systems that can en encapsulate a wide variety of network layer protocols inside of virtual point-to-point -point links or point-to-multi-point -point links over an internet protocol network. And so uh, basically tunneling protocols there, um, GRE. Going down, um, 
move down here to the letter I, I believe. Let's see if there's anything on the top. Uh, this one, yes, IDEA. So International Data Encryption Algorithm is a once proprietary free and open block cipher that was one intended to replace data encryption standards and once called improved proposal entity standards is a minor revision to the proposed encryption. So it has to do with encryption. Uh, you know, these are, I'm loosely just mentioning them guys. So you can, you know, if you feel like you want to study these farther, uh, you can take the ones that I've highlighted and just basically Google them, see the definition, Wikipedia or Technipedia. Uh, where I got these definitions from and, and just see more details about it if you like. Moving on to letter I, the ISSO, Information System Security Officer, again with this uh, officer positions, uh, just to make sure we have them down. This guy here would serve as a principal advisor to the information uh, system owner, uh, business processes owner and the chief information security officer and the information system security manager on all matters technical and otherwise involving the security on a, of an information system. So this is another position. Then we have the IT contingency plan or ITCP and that is contingency plans that ensure continuous on-site and off-site business operations, customer satisfaction and on-time product and service. Um, and service delivery, sorry. So there's the IT con contingency plan. Then we have the KDC for Key Distribution Center. It's a part of the crypto system intended to reduce the risks inherent to exchanging keys. And we have the KEK, which is the key encryption key, a key, and that is a key that encrypts other keys, typical tra uh, typically traffic encryption keys or TEKs for transmission or storage. Now moving down, I highlighted the LEAP, which is the Lightweight Extensible Authentication Protocol. And uh, that one basically, let's see here, is a uh, proprietary wireless LAN authentication method developed by Cisco Systems. Uh, important features of LEAP are dynamic web keys and mutual authentication. So it has to do with authentication protocols um, related to Cisco Systems. So for you to remember that now, another one here that is interesting, again, not mentioned in the objectives, but mentioned in the acronyms will be actually monitoring as a system. So M-A-A-S, many of us are used with the other ones, you know, IS or, or SAS, right? But this one is M-A-A-S or MAS, which is, it is a framework that facilitates the deployment of monitoring functionalities for various other services and applications within the cloud. So it's basically monitoring as a service. Now, just wanted to highlight here that there are three different uh, definitions for the acronym MAC. One is mandatory access control that we saw that. We are familiar with the MIDI access control. And there's another one, which is message authentication code. And all these three, if you would like to study them separately, I just uh, want to mention that they are, you know, stand for three different things, the same acronym. So uh, that's for the, let's see, for the letter M's, we still have a, a couple of ones here. The MPLS, which is the multi-protocol label switching, which is an IP packet routing technique that routes IP packet through paths via labels instead of looking at complex routing tables or routers. So this feature helps IT um, helps in increasing the delivery of rate IP pack. Uh, let me read that again. This feature helps in increasing the delivery rate of IP packets. So it has to do again with IP routing techniques, MPLS. Now we have MSP, which is Managed Service Provider. This is a, a, a type of IT service that uh, company that provides server, network, and specialized applications to end users and organizations. And so an important one to see here, MSP. Continuing with the letter M, we got a couple of ones here. Let me keep zooming here. Let's see. MTF, MTBF, which is mean time between failures. And it is the predicted elapsed time between inherent failures of a mechanical electronic system during normal system operation. Then we have the mean time to failure, MTTF which is the, it denotes the expected time to failure for a non-repairable system. And the mean time to recover or mean time to repair, MTTR, which it is a basic measure of maintainability of repairable items. It uh, represents the average time required to repair a failed component or device. And so this MT 
uh, different acronyms here, the mean time betweens and stuff like that when it comes to trying to recover or disaster uh, planning, etc. Uh, MTU is maximum transmission unit. It is the size of the largest protocol data unit, PDU, that can be communicated in a single network layer transaction, MTU. Then we have the NGAC, which is the next generation, the uh, NGAC, the next generation access control. So it's a set of uh, relations and functions related to the ABAC, which we studied earlier, uh, the attribute based control. Um, attribute based access control so uh, you can study this one further if you like or um, you know um, look it up google it as well then we have another one moving to the letter o uh, oval which is open vulnerability assessment language uh, it's an information security community effort to standardize how uh, how to assess and report upon the machine state of computer systems and so it has to do with uh, basically coming together with a, with a way to standardize how to read vulnerabilities uh, and report them and, uh, in computer systems oval. And I think there's actually a website for that that you can go to and kind of see how they do that as well. Uh, then we have PAC protocol, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, proxy auto configuration, which it is a method used by web browsers to select a proxy for a given URL. Then we have a PAM, PAM, Pluggable Authentication Modules, and that is a mechanism to integrate multiple low-level authentication schemes into a high-level application programming interface API. Um, coming down with the letter P here, we have PAD, which is Port Address Translation. So it is a function that allows multiple users within a private network to make use of minimal number of IP addresses. So compare that to NAT, right? Then we have PBX, which is private branch exchange. It's a private branch exchange. It's a private telephone network used within an enterprise. So it has to do with um, telephones and enterprise uh, telephone systems. PCAB is the uh, basically packet capture. So a PCAB is the uh, application programming interface that captures the live network packet data from the OSM model layers two to seven. So um, network analyzers like Wireshark create PCAP files to uh, collect and record packet data from a network. So in, ca in case we see an exam that there, you know, an example can be given to us um, as an exam question, there was a PCAP perform um, in a network and somebody realized that there, you know, that there were contents that were um, plain text. And so what is a measure of, you know, I'm just giving an example that, again, the acronyms are important to learn because this lets us know, okay, it's talking about packet capture, right? Um, so that would be a, a good one to learn. The next one here is PED, which is Personal Electronic Device, and it's a piece of electronic equipment such as a laptop, computer, or mobile phone that is small and easy to carry. So it's a that could be called a PED. So I have a PED, PED right? Um, that's an example. Next one here is Poodle, or P or P O O D L E, which is a a padding oracle on downgrade legacy encryption. Sorry for the uh, here for the small lettering. Uh, it is a man in the middle exploit which takes advantage of internet and security software clients fallback to SSL 3.0. So it's an exploit, a man in the middle exploit. Poodle, you can remember that. Then we have Pots the plain old telephone service, which is a retronym for voice grade telephone service employing analog signal transmission over copper loops. And so POTS refers to that. Uh, continuing here with the letter P, uh, we have PTZ, and that stands for a pan tilt zoom camera. So it's a camera that's capable to remote uh, directional zoom control. So if we see any, a question that says a PTZ was able to capture somebody um, trespassing a you know uh, a forbidden area or whatever, PTZ stands for that camera that is usually you know looks like a ball that moves around pan tilt zoom cameras. Uh, then we have RAD, Rapid Application Development. It's a former agile software development uh, methodology that prioritizes rapid protocol uh, releases and um, iterations. And so it has to do with the agile software development, development model. So the RAD 
it's pretty rad to get software going like that, right? Or developing software like that. So uh, remote access server, a RAS, is a type of server that provides a suite of services to remotely connected users over a network or the internet. So it is, uh, it has to do with uh, basically remote access um, and a type of service that provide that, the type of uh, services for remotely connected users. Moving down to the letter R, we have risk management, risk management framework. Um, it's actually United States federal government policy and standards to help secure information systems, um, computers and networks developed by, nation, uh, by National Institute of Standards and Technology. All right, so now we have moving on with the letter R here. We got the remotely triggered black hole or RTBH. And that is a f um, filtering and a popular and effective technique for the mitigation of denial of service, service attacks. So RTBH uh, would have to do with uh, techniques for uh, mitigating DD uh, or DOS attacks. Moving down here to the letter S, we have SCAP or Security Content Automation Protocol. And uh, let me see here, pull it up. It is a security enhancements protocol that uses specific standards to help organizations automate the way they monitor system vulnerabilities and make sure they're in compliance with security policies. Then we have SCEP or Simple Certificate Enrollment Protocol. It is a protocol that allows devices to easily enroll for a certificate by using URL and shared and a shared secret to communicate with the PKI, CS, uh, SCEP. Then moving down here, the other ones that I noticed I needed to uh, pay more attention to would be um, SDLC, which is Software Development Lifecycle. It's a process followed for a software project within a software organization. It consists of a detailed plan describing how to develop, maintain, replace, and alter uh, or engage or enhance, I'm sorry, specific software, which is related to SDLM, which is the Software Development Cycle uh, Lifecycle Methodology, which refers to a methodology with clearly defined processes for creating high quality, sorry, uh, created for, for creating, so again, uh, refers to a methodology with clearly defined processes for creating high quality software. And moving down, we have SED, which is a type of hard drive that automatically and continuously encrypts the data on the, uh, on the drive without any user interaction. So SED would stand for self encrypting drive, SED. And then we have SEH, which is structured exemption handler and it is a protection mechanism, uh, sorry, let's pull it up again, a protection mechanism that was implemented to mitigate the abuse of buffer overflows. So I think it was Windows-based uh, structured exception handler. Uh, moving down now, uh, we got a couple of more with the letter S here. We have SOAP, O-S-O-A-P, Simple Object Access Protocol. It is a messaging protocol specification for exchanging structured information in the implementation of web services in computer networks. So a messaging protocol, uh, Simple Object Access Protocol. Then we have the SPF, Sender Policy Framework. Uh, which is an email authentication method designed to detect forging sender addresses during the delivery of email. So basically an authentication method, SPF. And then this is the one here that, uh, that inspired me to do this, SPIM, which is the spam over inner messaging. So basically self-explanatory, basically over Facebook messages or direct message. Uh, so it's, SPIM is the span over internet messaging, SPIM. Then we have the spoof or SPOF, which is a single point of failure. So self-explanatory there in case you see that one. Uh, moving down to the letter T, we have TGT. So that one is ticket granting ticket. So it is a small data set used, to, used in Kerberos authentication, which was developed at MIT for authentication server traffic. So it has to do with authentication by Kerberos TGT. 
Then we have T SIG, T SIG or T S I G, which is transaction signature. It's a computer network protocol defined in R RFC 2845. Primarily, it enables the domain name system to authenticate updates to a DNS database. So it has to do with protocols to uh, relating to DNS, T SIG. Then we have you are you might have uh, we might have heard of URL with the universal resource locator, but then we also have the URI. So by one letter there, we just have to be careful with the difference. Uh, and, and basically, this one URI uniform resource identifier. It is a string of characters that unambiguously identifies a particular source. Uh, so you know you can study that di differentiation between URI and URL as well would be important. Um, then moving down, we have with the letter V, VLSM, which is variable length subnet masking relating to networking. And that's basically a, a technique that varies from um, the simple sign uh, subnetting, which is a technique that allows network administrators to divide an IP address's space into subnets of different sizes, unlike the simple same size subnetting. So the VLSM has to do with subnetting masking. And I believe there was a second line here, VTC. Uh, let's pull it up here, let calls it, which is video teleconferencing. So self-explanatory, in case you see VTC, it says video teleconferencing. A lot of, we do a lot of that, right? And then another one I wanted to point out is basically warm, which not to be confused with the warm attack or the um, or, you know or the, the, the virus related warm. Um, or the malware related worm, uh, but this is actually write once, read many, which is has to do with logging uh, logs from Sims, for example, that they, um, in order for the logs not to be uh, changed manually, they are write once and read many. Uh, so that is kind of like the methodology for many of those logs. And the last one that I highlighted here was WTLS, so it's wireless TLS, basically. WTLS for the transport layer security, TLS. Um, and uh, other than that, that's it, guys. So here they are. That's all of them here, um, with each one of them with their definition. I'm going to try to see if I am able to share this document with the notes with you guys. Uh, on the description, maybe a link to a PDF so that you guys can have them as well. And that's basically my um, little study uh, session here that I did uh, that has to do with acronyms that were not explicitly mentioned uh, in the objectives, nevertheless are contained in relating implicitly to each one of the objectives. But uh, a lot of these that I wanted to expand upon and at least see a basic definition of each one of them. So I hope that helps guys. And thank you so much for watching and we'll see you the next time.